Farming Garage. I'm Aaron. Uh, today we are going to get started on that 83 quad cap long bed that I showed you yesterday in the tour video. Um, I went ahead and pulled the bed off of it outside. I was going to film that, but it was windy and you wouldn't have been able to hear anything anyway. So we got the bed off, brought it inside. The 49 we rolled it out to the yard while we wait for a new motor to show up so i got to shorten the frame on this to make it a short bed we're going to put half ton suspension under it and i have to replace the door and probably can't see very well but the inner rocker's pretty rusty so we're going to fix that this is a friend of mine's truck we're doing some work for him so i'm gonna today i'm gonna take the bumper off take off all the extra brackets we don't need take off the fuel tanks unhook the brake lines um, just all that stuff to get prepped to get started on cutting it down so i'm gonna put it on time lapse and i'll check in with you guys every once in a while and we'll get her done Okay, I got the uh, exhaust and the drive shaft off. I pulled the wiring for the tail lights and all that stuff out and tucked it up under the truck where it'll be out of the way. So all that stuff's clear. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up this frame, everything we don't need. These are just exhaust hangers, they're riveted on. It's one here, one there, one there, and then there's two more back here in the back. I'm going to show you a little trick for getting off these rivets. You guys might have already seen it or you might have a better way, but I'm going to show you how I do it. So let me get set up here and then we'll uh, take a little video of that. So when it comes to getting these rivets off, I like to, uh, here's your rivet here, you got your dome. I'll take my cutoff wheel here and I'll cut a straight line up and down, and then I'll cut a straight line side to side. All right, now the air compressor shut off and you can actually hear me again. You can see what I did here. I just cut across um, right there in the middle of the rivets. And then what I do is I got this old air chisel bit and this is all I use it for and I just take it over on the bench grinder and sharpen it every time so it's nice and sharp and you just get in here and they pop right off reason you put the X's in them is because they break off a lot easier. If you try to take the air chisel bit and just hammer down through it, really hard to get it out. Now I'll come back with the air chisel with just a pointy bit on it and just brup, brup, and those pop right out and the whole bracket will come off. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the rest of these brackets that we're not going to need. And I'll uh, put you guys back up where you can get an overview of what I'm doing. All right, I got all the exhaust hanger brackets off. Got the drive shaft out, got the exhaust off. Got the fuel tanks pulled off, got the wiring pulled out. The only thing I have left to do is disconnect that union for the brake lines and we'll move it out of the way. And then I'll do some cleanup. My wife just called me and told me if I wanted to eat today, I better come in and have dinner. So 
kind of want to eat, so I'm going to go in and do that. Uh, come out in the morning and clean up the mess I got here on the floor from taking all that stuff off, get all those parts and everything out of here, so I'm working on a clean surface. And uh, then we'll start showing you the process to go about to cut it. So it's going to be tomorrow for me. It'll be about right now for you guys. So we'll see you in a second. All right, everybody, we're back at it again. I'm going to show you a couple things that I'm going to do, and then I'm going to put it on time lapse again so we can get it all ready. So the first thing I got to do, move this brake line. I'm going to undo that stock union right there and I'll kind of gently bend that side out of the way and then I can unhook the other side of the line from here and get that completely out of the way. I got to unhook my parking brake cables and get them out of the way and then I have to, I'm going to take and clean this frame rail up real good where I'm going to be cutting it so I've got nice clean metal to mark on and work with. So I'm going to go ahead and get that stuff done and then we'll I'll show you how to measure it and lay out your cuts. Oh, well, we got it cleaned up as good as we're going to get it cleaned up for now. It's as good as we need it. Now we're going to mark it for the cuts. So the first thing you want to do, make sure you got a good sharp thing to mark it with so you can get a clean line. I'm going to go to the back of the cab. Actually, better off the back of this cross member here. Want to make sure you get a mark where you can get it perfect on both sides. For right now I'm going to go from the front side. I'm going to go from the front side of this bed mounting hole here. You always want to leave the bed mounting hole because it will line up with your short bed. I'm going to come back inch and a half. Then I'll take my square and put it on there. Make sure I get a nice crisp line. And then I'm just going to trace that line all the way down. Measure off of that line. We're going to come back exactly 14 inches. So. Okay. We'll do the same thing back here. go over and do the exact same thing on the other side. Alright, now we got all that marked out. Next thing I got to do is get the truck up on jack stands in about three different spots. I want to jack up the front until the frame's level. Put jack stands up in the front. And then I'll uh, put another set of jack stands right at the back of the cab. And then I'll put another set of jack stands right underneath this front spring hanger. So we got it supported on both sides of this and then I'll probably throw one one or two jack stands at the back just to hold that up so when I cut it, it doesn't flip on me. So I'm going to go ahead and get it jacked up and leveled out and then we'll start cutting. Okay, I've got everything jacked up. It's level. I like to cut these with the Sawzall. Always make sure you got a brand new blade. 
and uh, I like to use the short blades because then you don't get that waving from the big ones that throws you off course. So I'm going to go ahead, this middle section is what I'm taking out, so I'm going to go ahead and cut on the inside of both my lines, leave plenty of meat there, and then I'll go back with my grinder and I'll grind them right to the line so I can butt it back up together. Okay, I forgot to mention this before I uh, started cutting, but there's a lot of different ways you can cut it. Some people say you need to do like a Z pattern. Some people say you need to do like a 45 degree angle cut. I read in a GM dealer manual a long time ago the procedure that they would use to cut down a frame. And what they do is they just cut it straight. So I'm trying to make this as stock as possible I guess so I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way so now I got this cut I'm gonna clean, grind it clean it up to my lines and then uh, we'll start to swing it back together all right I got everything ground down cleaned up straight both sides I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I might clean it up a little bit more on the inside I'm gonna slide it back together get it Square it up and then we'll start welding on it. All right, so we got the frame back together, got it all welded up. Next step is uh, we're gonna make some gussets or we're actually gonna make it a dual frame. We're gonna take the piece that we cut out, we're gonna shrink it down a little bit so it fits tight in there. And then we're gonna weld that in and then we'll come back and clean everything up. So there it is all welded back together. No jack stands under the back anymore. It's holding itself up. So we got our chunk of frame that we cut out here. So we're gonna go ahead. I wanna try to put as much of it in as I can. So we're gonna go as close to this leaf spring hanger as we can. And then we're gonna come all the way up to the back of this cab support brace and put it in there. So we just gotta measure the thickness of the top and bottom rail here subtract that out of this and then if you see it kind of start the frame starts to slope up here so i have to account for that so i'm going to start making up these plates and uh, i'll show you what i do all right i'm working on these inner brackets if you look at the frame you can see it comes across flat right here but then it goes up so I took some measurements and found out that the furthest point back here where it's gonna go is a half an inch higher than here. So what I'm doing, I got these tacked together and I went ahead and measured a half an inch here and then I'll heat this up and bend that in and that'll make it taper from where we need it to start out to the edge. I already went ahead and did this one. So it's done. It's welded up. We just got to do some, we got to grind this off and clean it up smooth so we can get it in there. And then uh, that one's ready to put in. So I'm going to do the same thing here, heat it up, bend it in, weld it together, finish weld the rest of it. And then we'll be able to get going putting them in. Okay, so I got the inside 
all cleaned up and ground down on both sides of the frame. And then I got my brackets, gussets, supports, whatever you want to call them. Got them all finished up. And I painted the inside of the frame and the brackets with this stuff. It's called Steel It. It's weldable and it, when it dries, it's real um, heavy duty, good paint. So we put that on there. We're gonna let that dry just to stop corrosion and rust in between those plates once I put them in. So once that paint's all dry, then I'll go ahead and stick my place in and start securing them to the truck. Okay, so I got my first piece in there. It is, uh, fits really good at the bottom. The sides are tight. There's a little bit of gap there at the top, but it's just kind of curled. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes through both frame rails. And then I'm going to put, uh, put some bolts in it, tighten it down. And then before I weld it up on the inside, I'll take the clamps and suck it up at the top, close that gap and weld it up. It'll look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling and we'll get back to you. It's not really any particular right place to put these bolts or I'm just gonna kind of spread them out okay after you get that all done next thing you're gonna do is come to the back of the frame you gotta take off six inches so we're gonna mark that. You have to remove this brace and we're gonna have to move it forward. So it's the back of it's about exactly six inches from the end of the frame. So what we'll do is once we cut our frame, we'll measure up six inches and we'll put the back of this cross brace right there so it's in the same spot on the from the end of the frame to the cross members the same distance as it is now once we move it. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this out. I'll cut this uh, cross member loose and then we'll cut that off. All right, got some bolts in there. Got my plate on the inside. Got it all welded up. So, bolts are a little bit too short. I bought two shorter ones, so I'm gonna have to get some longer ones and put them in tomorrow. Got the six inches cut off the back of the frame both sides got this brace out I'm gonna be making some modifications to the suspension so I'm not gonna bolt that back in right now we're gonna wait and do it all at the same time so whenever you take this brace out for any reason I always make sure you brace it with something because these frame rails back here turn into wet spaghetti when you take them out and then everything gets all mixed up so all I got left to do as far as shortening the truck is put my plate 
gusset on the driver's side. But that's going to do it for this video. Um, subscribe, please. And there's going to be a lot more going on with this truck. So um, hit the bell. It'll let you know, give you notifications when we got another video coming. And you can see some more on this truck. So that's going to do it for this video. Y'all have a good one, and we'll see you next time.